All right, so before we get into that part where we're actually transposing down an octave, I just wanted to go back quickly to this part. Um, right there, where he plays that note, the 13th fret of the G string, and then starts walking down that scale. Once he hits that note, that's where it changes from the C minor 7 to the F minor 7. And if you hear that, you can hear that change going on. Right? And what that's doing, it's playing the minor 3rd of F minor 7, right? So you have... So you could hear that forward. Um, then right? So you hear that change right there, and that's a cool little thing. Um, one day I'm going to use a, uh, a looper so you could actually hear this over backing tracks, or at least a backing chord or tonality. But uh, hopefully you could have heard that. And what's cool about that is it's a soloing technique that a lot of people get caught up in running like pentatonic licks or scale licks or phrases and stuff and they don't really think of chord tones. Um, it's something that I, I guess you get into the more advanced you get, uh, intermediate, advanced kind of thing. You start really trying to figure out why certain licks work off of uh, over other chords. And you'll hear a lot of guys like Guthrie or Scott Henderson or any of the really talented players um, that have been doing this for a long time, even when they're not playing with a backing track, you'll hear the changes. Like, you'll hear them going through chord changes, and it just sounds so cool. And, and it's not just because they're changing up scales and doing, you know, some mode here or melodic minor here. Or, you, you know, it's not always that. A lot of times it's just they're targeting uh, the specific chord tone. So if you're playing a major chord, you, you target that major third or a minor chord, the minor third, of course. Uh, you can play the root, the fifth, whatever. But then if you're playing over dominant seven, too, you target that seventh note, uh, major third and the seventh. So these are things we'll talk about eventually in another lesson, and we'll get into depth on it, and we'll show some examples. But uh, I just want to let you know that that's where that chord changes. And then it goes back to the C minor chord, and it's playing all these other things. So now, let's get into the next part of that riff. So, um, after it goes up this arpeggio, and actually, one thing, this arpeggio is a C minor arpeggio, right? So it's C, E, G, C, E, G. Um, and it's actually throwing in C, E, G, then it throws in that A flat note, which is the minor sixth, okay? So it's a minor six arpeggio. So you have root third fifth minor six root third fifth minor six and when he gets to these notes since on, on guitar on a clean tone they're so thin sounding that i kind of double it up with an octave right and we'll go back actually in this at the end and talk about how i try and spice this up and make it a little more guitar friendly because like even the beginning the Right? It, it just sounds very, it, it sounds okay, but I thought it's cooler if you start throwing in some bends and slides. So I actually play it like a... Right? So I'm adding some little slides, some bends, and it just makes it sound a little more guitar. Uh, but again, we'll get into that at the end. So this goes, after it goes up that arpeggio. It does this little slidey thing, which is very bluesy. So you have your uh, 13th fret on the E string. Then you play the 14th fret on the B string and slide that up to the 15th fret on the B string. And when you, you play that first note by itself, then these two notes together. And it does that three times. So you have... Now 
Now this phrase is really cool. Uh, this is again that technique of playing very simple diatonic notes. Right? Right in the scale. But what you're doing is you're offsetting the rhythm. So the first time the phrase goes, again, it's all on the 13th, 15th, and 16th fret on the B string. So the phrase is 15, 16, 15, 13, 15. Right? So. Now the second time he plays it, instead of just doing again, he goes, the first time is, then the second time is, Right, so he kind of does it twice, so and it throws the rhythm off. So actually, he doesn't go back up to that 15th fret the second time. So the first time is 15, 16, 15, 13, 15. Then the second time is 15, 16, 15, 13, 15, 16, 15, 13. So it's and he ends on that 13th fret. So. Then he pauses for a second and he does that first phrase again. So that whole thing is. Just a really cool thing. And if you listen to it on the recording, it's very simple. I mean, it's, the note choice is very simple, but it's twisting of the rhythm. So the listener's ear is just thrown off just a little bit. OK, so after that. Um, Then it goes to, uh, sorry, I almost forgot. Then it goes to this. And what that is, is the 14th fret on the G string to the 17th fret on the E string, so an octave. Then you're going down to the 14th fret of the E string. So then it goes the, ten, uh, the 15th fret on the B string. And if you look at that, it's just really like a D major arpeggio, right? So you have... Then it goes down to the 17th fret of the D string, bars the 17th fret of the G string. You're not playing them together, but you're rolling over. Then you go up chromatically from the 15th, 16th, to 17th fret on the B string and you go back down to that 15th fret on the B string. So a chromatic walk up, back to that note. So then it goes back up that. And again, rhythmically, it's a little, all this is kind of in a different rhythmic setting. This is uh, really fast 16th notes. Uh, And it goes so like eighth notes or something or I'm not even sure I have to transcribe this out but that's the it, it's a little slower there so then it goes to so that part after it goes back up to this um, then it goes up this arpeggio where it's the 18 uh, 16th fret, sorry, I get messed up. <laughs> the 16th fret of the D string to the 15th fret and 16th fret of the G string to the 16th fret of the B string. So if you look at it, it's barring the B string basically on the D, G, and B string, and you're playing the 15th fret on the uh, G string. But you're walking up one note at a time. Then you play the 13th fret on the E string. And then you go to the 18th fret to the 19th fret of the E string. So, so you have. And we'll go back and we'll talk about what chords these are being played over because this is where that change happens. Um, so we went up an octave here. Actually, we, we transpose down from what was going up. Now this is all still up an octave. Well, again, transpose down. Now this is continuing to go up an octave, so you're up two. 
but we have to go down again because we're going to run out of notes. So this is a good spot to uh, to go back down. So if you go back down, you're going from the 16th, 17th, 19th fret on the B string. Then you go 16, uh, 18, 19 on the E string. Then he does this little triplet pull off from the uh, 18th to the 16th on the B string, back down to the 19th on the B string. So, so that whole walk up is actually with the arpeggio. And then it just walks down that scale from 19, 17, 16. And again, I, I, I changed this up a little bit to add some bends and some slides so that it, it, it sounds a little more guitar oriented. And we will get into that in a second. All right, so before we get into talking about spicing that up, let's just real quick finish this solo out because there's only a little left. And we'll also quickly touch on the chord changes that are happening. Again, what really makes this sound so cool in the way it is. Um, so we'll start with that. This whole section here when it goes... Right? That's all over a C minor chord. So... And you can see right here, right, you're playing those notes. Right? So you basically have your root note, you're playing a flat 9 to a 9 to a minor third, right? And then you have this, which is the fifth, right? Or I'm sorry, which is the uh, 11. So you have... Then it goes to... And you could hear that. Something's changing there. And what it is, that's where it's going to the dominant seven chord, the D dominant seven. So it goes from C minor to D seven. And right there it goes... Right? And it's starting on this note, which is the fifth of D. If you think of this D major arpeggio, right? And you're playing it over a dominant chord. The only difference between a D major uh, arpeggio and a D dominant arpeggio is you're playing root third fifth on a major, and you're playing root third uh, fifth minor seven. Uh, and the, the third is a major third. So it's a major chord with a flat seven. But here, you're just playing this note, which is the fifth. You're going up an octave, right? And then this next note here is the root and the major third, right? So you have fifth, fifth, major third, and root. Then you go down to this, which is the 11th. But then you go quickly to the dominant seven, right? Then you go root, flat nine, nine and back to the root so you're really targeting that root note well you, you have the fifth and the root and it's all chord tones i just got crazy um uh yeah then after that it goes to from that dominant chord it goes to a c sharp minor chord again it's that walk down of it. um so you have this, and right there is being played over a C sharp minor chord, right? And you're playing the 11th or the 4th to the minor 7. Actually, you're playing, you're playing the major 6 to the minor 7, so... Then you're playing that note there, which is the ninth of C. And that note kind of sounds out, but realistically, it is kind of out, but it's the major third, okay? Playing over a minor seven. So he maybe he might be playing uh, a major minor seven chord there. I'm not really sure, but again, it, he just steps on that for a second, so it's okay. So you have... Um, and right there, you play the major sixth again. And then when you get to this note, it goes back down to that 
C minor chord. And then you're just playing scale tones. So that's why that really works. Again, the D dominant 7, you're playing a D major arpeggio uh, with a 7th and uh, a ninth in there. Is it a ninth? I think? And then you shift right to this arpeggio, which really could look like, like we said before, um, a D sharp or an E flat minor arpeggio. But that's where you get those tones in over C sharp minor. 